So today we're going to be talking about a cult film that's about cults. Hmm, interesting. Children of the Corn is a 1984 supernatural horror film based upon Stephen King's 1977 short story of the same name. The film is directed by Fritz Kirsch and starring Peter Horton and Linda Hamilton as the main cast. The film is set in a fictitious rural town of Gatling and it tells the story of a malevolent entity referred to as He Who Walks Behind the Road, which entices the town's children to murder all the town's adults as well as a young couple just driving past to ensure a successful corn harvest. Now, when the film was released, it was actually slated. In fact, Ro uh, Roger Ebert actually said the only thing that's walking behind the rows is the people in the back row leaving the cinema. That's how much this film got slated. However, in the years to follow, it has built up a cult following. Now, what could have made this film better? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So we're gonna discuss 10 things that could make Children of the Corn better. As you hear, hit that subscribe button, also hit the like button. Also, please share with your friends, get the message out there. Um, this is a requested video, like most of my videos have been lately. It's requested by Sinister Rage Productions, who makes the web series Dark World, which is playing on my PC behind me. Um, and also, I'm one of the voice actors for, and part three will be coming out very soon, because as soon as I record this, I've got to record my lines. Busy day. So, thank you very much for requesting this, but what did I think of the film? Whether, before we get started, there are spoilers. I mean, this film came out in the 80s, why haven't you watched it? But, yep, spoilers, let's get cracking. Number 10, acting. Right at the very beginning of the film, you see the children murdering all the adults in the town. The thing is, watching this film, I am actually on the children's side because the adults were acting Appallingly. Hell, I'm not an actor. I borderline do voice acting. And yeah, the acting was just appalling. They're like, I've just realized that looks so wrong as well. But the point still stands, that's how they were acting. No wonder the kids wanted to kill them. So yeah, I mean, come on, you could have got some better actors. Just, I mean, hell, they were just sitting in a diner, eating and getting killed. Is that really that hard to act or find actors that could pull that off? But no, that was just appalling not a good start for a film number nine loud escape another thing from the beginning of this film three of the children are talking about escaping and one of them says i'm going I, that's it i need to get out so what do they do he asks the other two children to keep an eye out to make sure no one's around and they've got to do it all quietly so how do they do it there's no one here well there wasn't but you just shouted Everyone in the town's going to know you're trying to escape because of that. No wonder he didn't escape. I mean, come off it. I know they're children, but it should be all code to say it's all clear. Not shout at the top of your voice so everyone in the town can hear you. Number eight, missing murders. As I said, the, the film starts off with the murder of all the adults in the town. So you know this film isn't going to shy away from showing murders and people getting killed. Well, wrong. A bit later on, there's an old man in a gas station and he's there to just stop people going into the town. And that's all he's there to do. But he fails in his job, so they're going to kill him. And you see them starting up, you see him gearing up, getting their weapons about to kill them. And then the camera disappears to another scene. And then he comes back in dead. Why are you missing that? You've already shown murder. It's not something that's taboo in this film, but you've missed this one. It doesn't actually make any sense whatsoever. Hell, you should actually just show that murder. At least get a little bit gore from us gore enthusiastics. Number seven, chemistry. The film stars Peter Horton and Linda Hamilton. Linda Hamilton went famously become Sarah Connor in The Terminator. So she's, you know she's a good actress and Peter Horton's also been in quite a few high profile films as well. So he's a good actor. Except these two have no chemistry with each other. I found their chemistry quite flat. Now their chemistry and interactions with the children and other actors in the film was fantastic. Just between each other, it was just not there. Especially as the, they're supposed to be playing a young couple in love. And I didn't really get that they were a happy relationship. Now I know in the original story, they weren't in a happy relationship, but this film isn't showing that. It's showing that they're a happy couple. So there's a bit of like, 
you know, something you know, from the book and this, what they're trying to do in this film, are not actually gelling together, and it shows. Nation of Ivor literally told the cast, don't read the book, we're not doing it, or read, just copy the book. Number six, Wound. So as the film progresses and it starts building up, uh, but Peter Horton's character, Bert, gets stabbed. He gets stabbed about here in the chest. Okay, I don't have an issue with that, except he's holding his shoulder. He's not holding here, he's holding his shoulder. I don't quite understand. You'll be holding like this, you'll be all like that. But no, he's holding his shoulder, he's holding his arm. He's acting like his arm's hurt, but that's not where he got stabbed. He got stabbed just in the pecs. No. Number five, boring hour. So yes, for the first hour of this film, nothing really happened. I mean, it is very, very boring. This is how boring it was. We had to watch it twice because we fell asleep. I watched it with my girlfriend and yeah, we fell asleep. We had to go back and watch it a second time. But yeah, nothing really happens. It's supposed to be building, but it's quite, you know, doesn't really explain anything. The last half an hour of this film is where it is. So if you want to watch this film, just go to like the one hour mark and watch it from there because you're not actually missing anything at all. It builds up and the last half an hour is okay, but the first hour that's supposed to be building suspenseful, building the plot, explaining to us audience what's going on. No, they do all of that literally in the last half an hour. Number four, don't help, help. So approaching the climax of this film, actually in the climax of the film, Brad's gone running off into the corn film to actually try and defeat the corn and the entity that's controlling the corn. And Job, one of the other children, comes to help him. He says, no, go away, help, don't help me. And then literally two seconds later, help me, help me, help me. Make up your mind. Either you don't want the children helping or get the children to help. Don't change your mind within a second flat. Number three, no fight. So still on the climax of this film, Brad's running off into the corn to try and like destroy the corn, save everyone. And then the corn attacks him and then Job comes and rescues him. Does the corn then actually try and re-attack him? No, just sits back and lets Brad do everything. It doesn't actually stick up for itself. It do it's waiting for itself to die. There should be more of a fight. There sh the corn should be attacking these people, but they're not. It's like loads of wind everywhere. That's all the defense. We know the corn can attack because it happened a moment ago. But yeah, the bit inconsistency, the corn just sat back and let Brad and Job destroy the corn. Number two, dead body. Yeah, this is a, quite a bizarre one because the plot of this film actually, they accidentally run over a child. Then it turns out the child was already dead. So they put the child, wrap it up and put it in the boot of the car go to the town to try and find some police and let people know what's going on. And that's literally the first hour of this film is them looking for someone to like say, hey, look, we've accidentally run over a child. It's in the trunk of our car. Yes, I'm saying trunk because it's an American film. But yeah, it then it moves away, which I understand. That sort of understands why it moves away, but as the climax of the film happened. Then we get to the end of the film, right at the very end of the film. And they're talking to two of the nicer children saying we're going to adopt you come and live with us but you're right in front of the car where there's a dead body you don't even mention you don't even say that oh by the way your friend was killed he's in the back of the car no you're having fun there's a dead body in the trunk of your car come on make a reference to it the poor kid number one stephen king's version so as previously said, this is actually based on Stephen King's story, but he went a bit further than that. He actually wrote a script for a film version of this, which closely followed his short story, and which is the couple are actually not in a good place in their marriage, and they're trying to escape and trying to repair. And that's his story. But they weren't the main focus. They were actually more of a side uh, plot. The children were always the main focus to the actual original book actually explains a lot more in the first part of the book why the children are what the entity wants and i think that was missing now the climax of the film was even worse brad saves the day no sorry brad and his girlfriend both died i mean sarah connor sorry i'm gonna call her sarah connor because that's what she's saying she had her eyes gouged out and yeah so 
I think it would have been more better though, especially as the reason why they didn't use Stephen King's script is because they wanted more violence, more gore, and yet they eased up on that as well. This film was all over the place. Different people wanted different things. They just wanted a corn killing story, but they wanted different things. It was Stephen King's story. He wrote a script, should have gone with that. It would have been a lot more interesting, a lot more compelling and keep us actually in. Final thoughts. So last week I did In the Mouth of Madness and I thoroughly enjoyed that film. And as a horror film, it kept me compelled and glued to the screen from beginning to end. This film did not do that. This film was quite boring. And I mean very, very boring, but so much so. This film should be called Children of the Boar because it isn't compelling. I could be quite happy just to fast forward and watch the last half an hour, like I previously said. It's not that good. It, the soundtrack isn't that good. The acting is okay with other things, but between the two main cast, no, it's very stale. It's not quite right. This film is off all the way through it. Even the children, hell, Isaac was played by a 27 year old and it shows and it wasn't quite right. They were going for that quirky thing, sorry, you failed. Now the last half an hour of the film is actually quite good and quite entertaining, but how many people got to the last half an hour? I mean, if I wasn't reviewing this for this video, I probably would have switched the film off. I didn't exactly like it. So how am I going to rank it? Only because the last half an hour isn't actually that bad, but it's a trek to get there. I'm actually going to give this four out of 10 berries. That's it. Sorry, I can't actually give it that much more than that because the whole thing needed something compelling, something to keep us invested. Yeah, this film was not that good, I'm afraid. So as a result of that, I'm moving away from horror film. In fact, next week, I'm going to do something. I'm going to review a film that is light-hearted, funny, and also a brilliant story. That's all I'm going to give as a clue for next week. Until then, Akuna Matata.